My name is Godwin Olua. You're welcome to today's edition of Lawyer the Lab's Thursday Read Book series. Um, today we're going to be discussing on the topic um, provisions of the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018. And with me here is a guest. His name is um, Comrade Musa M. Musa. He is um, the program assistant for the FEPA for Citizens with Disabilities. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I think before we start, um, the audience would like to um, know a bit about you so that they can relate to what everyone wants to discuss. Okay, um, thank you very much. My name is Comrade Musa. I'm Musa, as you already pointed out. I work with the Center for Security and Disability CCD, the program assistant in our local office. Um, yeah, as you know, I'm um, a disability rights activist. That's what I do, and uh, I'm also uh, a couple of also a politician, a civil politician, so you know, that's where I am. <laughs> wow. Um, I think some people are already thinking of holding you. So the, the people who are expecting a lot from whatever we have to discuss, and I'm sure from the topic, um, which has been offered um, for like in the last 36 hours, they are uh, hearing it from you now. They'll be looking forward to. Arresting you after this show, but <laughs> nobody should do that. So, um, we have a few questions that we will have to we'll premise our discussion on. Um, and I think we should start with, first of all, um, talking about FEPA for citizens with disabilities. Um, can you just briefly tell us what the organization is about? Okay, um, thank you very much. Center for Citizens with Disabilities is a premier organization of and for I want to prioritize for more and for the for life presentation of the Our organization was funded in the year 2022. That's uh, sorry, in the year 2002. As a result of the Congress having uh, experience in the hands of the rebel in the city of Queen and Syria, where his two hands were chattered and uh, making him to his two hands are routine, as I stated before. So our uh, organization since its establishment over two decades ago, has been working in almost all state occasions. Uh, in the state level, we want to see how states can come up with uh, uh, rules and policies that will protect the rights of people. And I'm also glad to let you know that Center for Citizens with Disabilities is an organization that coordinated uh, the advocacy that led to the passage of discrimination against persons with disabilities in the Commission Act 2008 by President Obama. Uh, in our organization, we, we do almost everything in terms of disability. But one thing we don't do as an organization is rehabilitation. We do research, we do advocacy, we do uh, a, a kind of um, a, a lot of things when it comes to engaging uh, both the QCPRs and also engaging the, the leaders of persons with disabilities to, to see that um, there are appropriate rights and laws and policies that guarantee their, their need. Wow, that's a handful. Um, we, I, I believe people are, all, are really um, looking forward to the rest of the discussion um, because of the profile we have given um, about your organization. We are, uh, I'm sure they're impressed that we invited someone from the organization to discuss this, um, this um, have this discussion with. Um, so, can you briefly, you know, just like the topic goes, for the um, provisions of the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act on education for persons with disabilities in Nigeria. So just as that goes, that people who already look forward to hearing anything about education that the Act has to have made provisions um, on. So now, can we briefly um, know the situation of education for persons with disabilities in Nigeria before the enactment of that Act? Okay, uh, thank you very much. I the situation of education, uh, both from the primary, secondary, and tertiary level in Nigeria, before the advent of the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Act, uh, is, a, is a something that one cannot write one about. And uh, does the situation improve? Some medicine will still say no. But what was the situation like? Um, let me paint a picture on what an average person with disability goes through. Uh, uh, in the struggling to 
are can gain formal education in Nigeria. Uh, before the advent of uh, discrimination against persons with disability, uh, the, the, the Prohibition Act, there's a national policy on inclusive education in Nigeria. That policy was there, which was also adopted and approved by the National Council of Education sometimes seven years ago. But was the prohibition something that persons with disability are basically to commit? The question, the answer is no. Uh, I can say to you, that persons with disability, when it comes to getting education, they are the worst hits of the bad system in Nigeria. Because from the primary school level, they come up with all kinds of segregation, discrimination from the peers, uh, from the, at the secondary school level, you will be subjected to not go to a regular school where you can interact with your, your peers and also friends. You are being saying, oh, this person has disability, so he has to go, you need to go to a special school. Or even when you are in a regular school, there are certain things that your peers are doing that you are not allowed to do. And going into a special institution, you can imagine how our lecture halls are situated, how many staircases, how many steps, and at times, when a, a lecture is scheduled in the hall A, at the dying day, you say, okay, you need to go to hall 3 in a distance of 4 or 5 kilometers. You can imagine how a person is going to come up with. And that's in the accessibility aspect. And when I talk about participation aspect, that's when I will talk about older categories of persons with disability. We have uh, institutions of government and private who there are both sign language interpreters who interpret for the deaf. For visions for recording materials for the blind. We don't have a, a visual for, for the albinos. So these are issues that every person with disability who attained the certain levels of degree in school, the attained level of certificate in Nigeria, go through because it was before he becomes that. And as I speak with you, the situation has not improved much, even though the advocacy and the awareness and sensitization is ongoing. But we must see the, the government of the day or the, the the, the Ministry of Education, both at the state and national level, has not demonstrated a, a, a kind of a political will enough to say that persons with disability are targeted and also are going to be in, uh, included in the planning and the implementation of the So we have building policies on book, but not implementation. We have building policies, but cultures and other practice has made it worse for persons with disability to even enjoy the education. So this was the situation before the advent of uh, discrimination against persons with disability provision. But the question is, did when the discrimination against persons with disability provision happened, was there improvement? Yeah, there's improvement in terms of we will do it. But have they done it? That question will still need to be answered. So this is the situation. This is the kind of a uh, 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 small picture I pense to you that an average person with disability be it a physical person, uh, someone who is fairly disability, who is a blind, who is an albino, who is a spinal cord injury, who is this, who is that, that is what he goes through in the struggle to get the certificate that will qualify him for a formal response. Yeah. Um, so, if you are going to join us, we are discussing on the topic provision of the discrimination against persons with disabilities for the Article 19 on education for persons with disabilities. So this act of the function just get towards um So now for the um for the program or for this event we are talking on education amongst all other things that this act has provided for. So um we are going to be discussing right now on how much the act speaks to education so that I think people need to at least have the idea, an idea of the provisions, if there are any, before we start talking about any other things. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, the discrimination against persons with disability for the Vision Act 2018 has made a robust provision for the inclusion or for the education of persons with disability in Nigeria. Uh, to be specific, let me say in part five, section 17 to 20 of the Act has specifically identified some major issues around mainstreaming persons with disabilities in the education system. 
Let me start with uh, uh, section 17 of the Act that talked about persons with disability shall, as a matter of priority, get an unfettered access to education in Nigeria. So, what does an unfettered access mean? It means any barrier, it means any hindrance, any, it means any problem, be it systematic or structural, that would hinder the participation and accessibility. Uh, the accessibility of education to persons with disability shall be eliminated. The Act also went further. Subsection 2 of that law, we talked about that persons with disability in Nigeria will have free education from sec primary to secondary level. The Act also went further to talk about that in a situation where uh, uh, government and uh, establishing orders and existing uh, education system as much of importance and priority government shall provide all assistive devices all uh, 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 teachers must be trained on how to deal with issues of disability the structures must be made accessible and the language the curriculum should be improved upon now uh, a kind of address certain barriers around persons with disabilities. The Act also even went further to say people with intellectual disability can even have uh, a free education up to a tertiary level. The Act also spoke about issues around uh, or situation for persons with disability when it comes to uh, um, the kind of practices in the system. One are going to be need to get in order to have a kind of unhindered learning environment. So, so let's then go to the greater extent that the act. Um, you know, a lot of things the act, um, the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018 provides for um, a kind of tied around the National Commission. Which shall be, which um, the access shall be instituted to oversee all issues around um, the implementation of um, the act for persons with disabilities. So, how do you think? Supposing you know we are in Nigeria, so we can't say we we, we, we can't run away from the from the likely. So, supposing um, this act, this commission is not um, set up on time. Is there any way you think the act can go on without this commission? Or is it really hinged on them? The, the commission must be established before anything happens. Okay, uh, thank you very much for this question. Um, let me establish something. Um, from part 1 to part 7 or 8 of the act and all the sections, if you uh, to categorize it, it's categorized into three parts. The first part are uh, part that can be implemented without the presence of the commission. Okay. And let me give you an example. In part one, section one, two to three, that talked about discrimination and awareness creation around persons with disability, is saddled that part specifically mentioned that uh, the Federal Ministry of uh, uh, Information and the National Human Rights Commission shall put in place areas of communication to sensitize the public about the act. So you see, that can be done without the commission. Then secondly, he talked about a discrimination. Like, as a person with disability, if I'm being discriminated upon, and discrimination, discrimination is a compounded way, but let me simplify it. Like, if somebody look at me and use some uncharitable word on me, or he looked down on me, or he treated me in other ways that is discriminatory, that is also not uh, uh, in accordance with the provisions of the law. I can take it upon by going to court. The law said if it is an individual, if found guilty, it will pay a sum of 50,000 naira, and if it is a corporate body, they will pay a sum of 100,000 naira. So you can see that this part does not require the commission 
in making sure the, the, those uh, provisions are implemented. Even in the part of education, it does not sacrosanctly say it must be the commission. So that's one part of it. Then there's another part that is exclusively it must be the commission that will uh, a kind of geared the implementation. Like, let me give you an example. In part, in part, uh, in, in part five of the act, that talked about part four, part five, and part three. That talked about establishment of the commission. That talked about uh, giving out a disability certificate. Do you understand? That talked about uh, a kind of approve, approval of buildings. All those ones cannot be done without the commission. Because the commission, the, the law explicitly said that in the, the commission, in collaboration with a medical law, uh, doctor or a hospital, shall ascertain to see whether you have a temporary or a permanent uh, disability that you'll be issued a certificate to benefit from certain provisions of the law. So you see, all those aspects cannot be done without the commission. the commission. Then the last part is the transitory period. There is a moratorium of five years in the law that said all, uh, all existing structures, all existing structures, and this is what I mean, public structures, public, public structures yeah. it must be remodeled within five years to make sure that persons with disability have unhindered access to those kind of structures. So, you see, all this one is a transition. This one, nobody can sue you until after that five years because there's a moratorium. Then, and again, the commission is not foresee you. It's an individual stuff. It's a corporate body stuff. So you could see that the law is not saying that it must, there must be commission, that all other provisions of the law can be implemented. So that, and by implication, certain parts of the law can, can thrive can be implemented without the commission. Okay. You know, you know, the reason I asked that question was, you know, when you explained um, what's unfettered, when you said persons with disabilities shall, shall have unfettered access to education up to secondary school. Yeah. So you exhaustively explained what unfettered is. And from that explanation, you see that that part of the act about on education um, says that the National Commission um, that oversees these issues shall make provision for assistive materials to person for ed the education of persons with disabilities. And looking at that explanation of unfair sorry, education. Sorry, I, the statement of provision of assistive devices mm -hmm. is not the National uh, 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 commission. commission. No, okay. it is the educational institutions. Okay. They must, the law said they shall provide assistive devices that will aid the learning condition of persons with disability. So it's not the commission, mm -hmm. but rather like if a government secondary school wants to practice, or let me say, as the law said, all school must, must be inclusive yes. to accommodate persons with disability. So what that means is that you must get certain assistive devices that will aid the learning of persons mm -hmm. with disability. And this can be primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. In the sense, that's so it's not it's not the commission per se. Okay. Yeah. But but the commission can advise, can guide. You understand? Know, the, the commission can guide. Mm -hmm. Like um, you know, there are so many ways of advocacy. If I don't want to get, I don't want to do an education advocacy to with you. I can write or I can, as a person with disability, I can go to the commission and say, I observe that so so things is not going well with this school. So I want this school, to, uh, the commission, to write. So what? It, but it, it to speak volume, it will carry weight if it is the commission that write seeking for those things to be put in place for persons with disability than individual. Mm, yeah, of course, there's power in that kind of establishment. Yes, government institution. Um, so um, another thing, you know, you were speaking of when you were and, um, addressing the, that um, question, you spoke of um, the five years monitoring period. So you know that it, that is very, um, it is a very dangerous thing because now we are looking at not doing anything till on, until five years, and you know that I know the nature of things over here. Um, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, even though, yes, you can't um, particularly hold something, someone 
um, to something that he still has time to do. Um, you know, but I think um, organizations can still do something about it. Just as a way of letting these people know that, okay, our eyes are on you and you can imagine where we are putting heat on you now when five years has not elapsed. So what we can do to you when five years has elapsed. Um, just bring actions in court, even though we know we cannot get anything very um, tangible, just bring actions in court so that these people are aware that the citizens are looking at them. So how, to what extent do you think um, this moratorium period, like to what extent do you think it has to, it, it, um, it can mar or make the implementation of this act? Okay, um, thank you very much for this. This is a very good question. Um, you see, the crafters of that law uh, make a kind of a survey or a kind of um, a kind of analysis around cost implication. Mm -hmm. And you can assume, let me say, your structure here is a three-story building, and it has been in existence for twenty years. Then because of the law that was just enacted in 2018 and you want this place to be remodeled mm -hmm. in that 2018 we are not being fair to you if one we don't know whether you have the money two we don't know whether you have even the the the, the materials mm -hmm. so the moratorium and again it must be put in context in the sense that the moratorium is specifically for existing structures Yes. The moratorium is not for because they said five years and building house this year, mm -hmm. I should not make it accessible until that fact is not. Mm -hmm. The moratorium is for those buildings, those structures that are already in existence before the, uh, the, the enactment of the law. So they were given five years. So and we look at five years to be enough, to be adequate enough for every person who genuinely want to implement the provisions of the law so to some extent we will see it as a delay but looking at how this trouble started 20 30 years ago mm -hmm. you understand and looking at five years it's progress it's progress so you can hinge tomorrow on anything if at the at the expiration of the five years you're unable to do that and then what is also very important on what whether it will mark or um, uh, make or uh, mark is that I'm happy organizations like yours and I, lawyers like CCD, we are always on advocacy. We are always letting people know that this is what the law said and these are the consequences when you fail to implement the law. So it will, what I would encourage organizations and individuals who want to see the rights of persons with disability are promoted and also protected is let us continue with the advocacy. It might not be now, but certainly it will be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I might not be the beneficiary of it. Mm -hmm. Certainly somebody will benefit from it. The people that started this struggle for the passage of Nigerian uh, Disability Act, some of them are, are, are there. But some of us were benefiting from their struggle. So it would not be necessary that I must benefit from it. Mm. So that's the situation. Okay, so the last question I have to ask is, you know, the act ties some of these, uh, the implementation of some of these things to some ministries and some offices. I don't want to, because it, 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 you can't say to some persons because they are tied to their official positions, so yes. not them in particular. Mm. So what are these, can you give us like, make mention of a few ministries so that in case any of them are watching and they haven't gone through this act, they just um, um, are aware, would be aware that some things are, are tied around them. So like some of the ministries that some of these things are, are tied around. Okay. Just and close. Um, from the beginning to the end of the law, every provision, if you study it well, is tied to a ministry. Mm. However, there are ministries that were specifically mentioned in the Act, like Ministry of Information is specifically mentioned. Yeah. Ministry of Youth is specifically mentioned. Ministry of Education is specifically mentioned. Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development was specifically mentioned. So, but however, there are, if you look at certain provisions, 
It cannot be implemented without orders. Ministry of Lands. Ministry of Lands. Yeah, like all this infrastructure we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We and we, we, we even go to the census of persons with disability. It can't go without the National Population Commission because the act establishing the, the, the National Population Commission said is the only body that can conduct census in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So you see, and without appropriate data of persons with disability, how can you plan for them? So, in a nutshell, I can say every ministry, agencies, and prospectors of government, mm. there's one or two things that the provision has linked to with. Mm. And it's also very important to say this as advocates of social justice and an advocate for the right of persons with disability, mm. we encourage as a first point of commitment from every ministry, first point of commitment from every ministry. Is that every ministry should have a disability desk officer mm. let it be that if i'm going to this ministry i have somebody who understands disability i have somebody who at the managerial level of policy making can look can put an eye and make a statement that will protect and promote the right of persons with disability in their programs so we encourage, as an organization, we encourage so powerfully. We, we, we do that almost on an everyday basis. And at any time we had an opportunity of meeting with NGS, we tell them, can you please have a disability desk officer? We're happy to say that today, INEC, from the national to state level, has a disability officer. We, and we want to see other ministries also do the same. So that at least if, as a person with disability, I should be able to have my representative at the policy table. Mm. Yeah. So this is what we do. Mm. So we have made mention of a couple of ministries um, and indirectly that um, by making mention of these ministries, the offices in charge of these ministries are also involved. So um, we implore these um, ministries to look at the parts where their names fall. Look at the parts of, of this act that cannot happen without them. And please do justice to the provisions. Thank you so much for being with us today.